Hello, good morning. We're just about to start. Sorry for the delay. We had some issues, some technical issues. Uh, first of all, Eva Martin, the head of the research service, will address some words. Okay, yes, sorry for the delay. But sometimes with the informatic, this kind of thing happens. Okay? Thank you for coming here. I'm very happy to see this uh, room full of people interested in, in Maria Skolodowska Curie Action in the of LOC. Uh, today uh, we have an information day. This is organized by Research Service. Sorry. Um. Well, we, we. Hola. No. Hola. No, está vermella. Cuando está. Hola, hola. Sí, ahora sí que se ven. Okay, let's start. Sorry. Well, the main aim of uh, this section is to help all of you to prepare a successful proposal and to try to resolve any question, any issue that you can have at that, at that moment, or maybe in the future, because this time you know all of us. Well, um, to this aim, we have three speakers today. Uh, the first one is Josep Nibo, as probably you know. Josep is um, the EU project manager of the uh, research office here at Ciutadella. He has a large experience in individual fellowships. Um, he will tell you very briefly some features and characteristics about the, this program, about the individual uh, fellowship. And second, or following, we have uh, Gemma Revuelta. She is here, over there. Gemma is the, she is the director of the Studio Center for Science, Communication, and Society uh, of the University of Pompeo Fabra. She is also a professor of the experimental and health department. She is also a coordinator of a project, European project called HERI, about the about responsible research and innovation. She has a large experience in um, European projects. Uh, she has a large experience in communication. That's why she is here. We have realized uh, in, in individual fellowships, we have realized that um, impact in communication is one of the weaker points on this section. So Gemma will help us to address properly this section in your proposal. And, and the third speaker is uh, Dr. Georgios Giannopoulos. Giannopoulos. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Jordi for friends, no? <laughs> Maybe easier for us. Uh, he's a researcher, a professor of the Department of uh, Humanities. He is uh, uh, an specialist in uh, cultural heritage. He is now here because he has participated as an evaluator in individual fellowships. So he will provide all of you with a view of the evaluator. Probably one is the more useful views because he can give you the, some tips to, for your, all your proposals, okay? After the, this large presentation, there will be about 20 minutes for questions. And finally, just to say that this section is, this session is, um, is being broadcast live, so you, you can see again, if you consider necessary, on our website. And presentation, there will be also available on the website, okay? Let's start now with the first speaker, Joseph Newell. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you all for being here today. Um, as Eva said, I'm project manager here at UPF at this campus, and basically I deal with social sciences um, uh, projects. Uh, we have here today with the other project managers from the research service as well, uh, Regina, Neus, and Paloma who 
if you are applying to, if you are um, thinking to apply to a Marie Curie head UPF, will also help you depending on your on your on your de department you will apply. Um, since most of, almost half of my time has already gone by, I'll I'll try to summarize what I was um, supposed to do. Basically, because they are mainly administrative issues, and I think it's more important that uh, we can get the advice from from Georgios or from Gemma, who are like, more specialists in, in these topics. Uh, we are all, always happy to answer any question that you may have, not only today after the presentations, but uh, at any other time. So as, as you may know, Marie Curie uh, are part of the excellent science pillar for, for the Horizon 2020 program. Uh, this means that are supposed to be like really impressive projects devoted to uh, focused on really good uh, researchers. Their main objectives are the, to support best researchers at any, any, any time of, of their careers with the main characteristic that you must have either your, your postdoc, your PhD, or have four years of full-time experience. It doesn't matter if you don't have the, the postdoc at the time of applying, as long as you can prove that you've been four years in full-time in research. There is a, a very important aspect of Marie Curie's, which is mobility. Not only international, but also intersectoral and interdisciplinary. International, it's obvious, you will be moving to another country, but keep in mind the intersectoral and inter interdisciplinary aspects. This is something that they really take into account, as uh, Georges will explain us later. And also take in mind that it's a good opportunity to move from another sector, not only to stay in the, in the, in the academia, so that is a good opportunity to also uh, grow your networks. As, all of, as almost all of the excellent science uh, pillar, it is a bottom-up project, so all fields can be fine, can be, uh, you can apply from any, any, any approach, humanities, science, uh, technology, it doesn't matter. So all of you are more than welcome to, to apply for that because all of you have the same opportunities. I will try to go a bit quick. Uh, there are some transversal concepts that you must have into that you must have in mind when, when doing your proposal. We have highlighted three of them. One of them is responsible research and innovation (ROI). This is a cross-cutting issue in all Horizon 2020 projects, and it implies open access. It implies gender aspects. It implies uh, sustainable research and innovation. It implies Making an easier, making easier uh, access to the results, your scientific results, formal and informal uh, science. So basically, um, there is a lot of information about this in in all the in several websites of the uh, Horizon 2020. We can help you with that, but keep in mind that you should focus not only in your research project, but in how this project will help you and will help other people and in a sustainable way. Open access is mandatory in all Horizon 2020 projects. Depending on the field you are, the rules are a bit different, but basically what they say is always keep, make your project as open as possible, as close as necessary. So if you have data which is very sensible, maybe you are not supposed to, to make it on, um, public, but maybe you can do a summary or something. All your publications must be uh, open at some point. And finally, uh, gender aspects. This is something very important. Uh, the European Commission takes it every time uh, more seriously. And as we will see, there is a specific point in, the, in your proposal, in, in chapter 1.3, where you are supposed to talk about, about uh, gender aspects of, the, of, your, of your project. Uh, basically, you should take care about sex and about gender. So not only about differences between men and women, but also differences in in uh, the society features and cultural features that men and women um, differ in. So if you are doing a project about uh, car accidents, for example, you may consider what happens if a woman is pregnant. It's not the same having an airbag for a man, for a woman, or for a woman that is pregnant. The differences may change. And this is very important because you will see in the reports that they take care about uh, if you have addressed gender or not, 
in case it is, it is um, necessary in your project. And some of the aspects we've seen and some of the advices we've received from the European Commission, it's this very last paragraph that being blind to potential differences of sex and gender may result in missed opportunities. So it's not only that it's important, but it also it may give you an extra point if, if you address properly gender, because may, there may be small groups that may need this, this different approach. What's one of the most important things or the things that people like more about Marie Curie <laughs> is uh, the salary. Especially if you come to Spain, um, it's like, well, it has nothing to do with any other postdoc that you may, that you may see. If you go to other countries, there's a, a, coefficient, uh, a coefficient rate, but basically, as I guess most of you will be coming to Spain, uh, you, may, you may like to see that uh, you get like 4,500 uh, gross per month plus a mobility allowance and family allowance if you are eligible at the time of uh, submitting your proposal. Uh, there will be maybe, I mean, this is not the net, but uh, there will be some taxes, maybe, well, for sure. Um, and also, uh, it's good to know that you get 800 per month in research activities, and that the university or the research center where you're going is, is also receiving some overheads, so they are always, lucky, always uh, looking forward to receiving this kind of, of project because basically they are free for them. So. Uh, what's the expected profile or what do you need to apply for a, for a Marie Curie? You need the applicant, so the researcher, you need a scientific supervisor, and you need a host institution. So it's quite straightforward. You have the researcher, you, it's yourself. You probably know some scientific supervisor from, for your experience, and this supervisor is working at a host institution, so you have the pack. And as I said, you need to have either the doctoral degree, <laughs> or four years in, in full-time uh, experience in, in research. Uh, well, I, I see some of you that are taking notes. Uh, all these presentations will be uh, sent to you, so it's, uh, don't worry about that. I'm, I know I'm, I'm speaking quite fast, but, uh, uh, but time, time is limited. Um, we have four different kind of, of Marie Curie, or we'll, we'll talk about four different kind of, of Marie Curie. There are the European fellowships and global fellowships. And within the European, we have three different, three different kinds. Basically, the standard European is what most of the people apply to. Then we have career restart panel for people who have been at least 12 months out of the academia. And then reintegration panel for those who are away from Europe or have just arrived to Europe and, and want to stay here for a while. And then global fellowships are for people who would like to move outside the European Union, stay one or two years there, and then come back one year at the European Union. And the return phase, it's mandatory. There is here a, a, a kind of a, a summary. And then one important thing is the mobility rule. If you apply for a European fellowship or a global fellowship, the country where you are going uh, this, uh, you, have, uh, you are not supposed to have spent there 12 months in the three years previous to the deadline, so 14th uh, September 2017. If you are applying to a reintegration or a career uh, restart panel, then it's three years in the last five years, so it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit easier. Important in the global fellowship is the country where the mobility rule applies is the country outside Europe. So if you are staying here at UPF, for example, at the moment, you could go to the US and then come back to UPF, as long as you have not been at the, U at the US more than 12 months in the last uh, three years. One important thing is that regardless of the, of the type you choose, uh, you can go in a secondment to another institution. Then there is always a bit of confusion between what's a uh, secondment. We've tried to, to make it easier for you, uh, showing the difference between a secondment and a short visit. A, a secondment is something, it's a, a stage that you do in another institution, which must be in Europe, which has an impact in your project. And it's something you've planned ahead. You, will, you would go to that other institution, university, research center, um, it can be any kind of it, 
you will have a supervisor there, and what you do, what you do there, it's important for your project. It has, without that, you could not uh, develop your project. Whereas a short visit, maybe a visit to an archive, for example, something that at a certain point of the project, you find out that it's maybe interesting to go there to spend some time, but it's something that it's more informal. You maybe don't, don't have uh, a supervisor over there, or it's something that it's not, not that important for the project. For you, it's of course important, but not for the project. And then, depending on the duration of the project, the, fellow, the secondment can be, can, can be maximum of three, of three months or of six months. As most of you will be applying for at least uh, two years, because the effort is, is, if you do the effort, it's worthwhile applying for two years, uh, then you will have a, a maximum of six months. This doesn't mean that you have to spend six months altogether. You can separate it in several, in several phases of two months, one month, one month at the first, at the beginning of the project, then three months at the end, whatever, it doesn't matter. But it's important that if you know that you're going to go on a segment, you put it in the project because this is, it's not that it's mandatory, but it gives you quite a lot of points, especially if it's in the, in the non-academic sector. Then you have here the, the schedule of this year's call. Important thing, deadline, 14 September, there is no opportunity to apply later. If you forgot a uh, document, if you forgot anything, there's no second chance. Results are, are probably appearing in late January, beginning of February 2018, and projects should start around uh, May 2018. And from that day, you have one year to start the project. So between May 2018 to April, May 2019, you can start your project. Then the, the application. Um, it has two separate, play, two separate parts. Uh, an administrative site, which is quite straightforward. Uh, for those applying at UPF, we can help you with that. It's quite simple. Important here is that you have to uh, select an evaluation panel. This is very important because the, the panel that you select is for whom you will be evaluated. So, if you're not clear belong to one, choose that one which can best uh, appreciate your CV and your project. And then there are some keywords that you have to write there. <laughs> and please list them in, in relevant order. The first one which you will select is the most important, the most appropriate to your project. Then don't, don't mention all areas. If you are an archaeologist and there is a little bit of biology, just don't put biology because it's probably not that relevant. And putting biology would mean that maybe a biologist would evaluate your project, and that person may have no idea about uh, archaeology, so you may lose some points there. Then, in the, in the scientific part, there are three parts. Excellence, impact, which I will not go through it because Gemma will talk about, and uh, implementation. The excellence has these four questions. I will just highlight some, some, of, the, some of the most important, or what we think is most relevant there. Basically, in the quality side, you have to highlight the state of the art of the project. Say what's, what has been done in that field since now, and what your project will bring. What's, what's the impact that your project will have in, the, in, this, in this part? You will know about your project. It's probably the part that you do best. So just go ahead, just don't be, don't be shy, and, and show that you know about this topic and that you know what will happen if this project is, is, uh, is funded. That you will, the state of the art, you will go through beyond the state of the art, that you will publish how many, whatever number of publications, etc. cetera. Uh, second point, important, training. Rem remember that Marie Curie is not only a scientific project, it's also training. So you have, you have to prove that you will learn in scientific uh, aspects, so you lack in, I know, a methodology, you lack in uh, some specific point of your project. And also that you will learn in soft skills, um, writing uh, grants, management, um, ethics, gender aspects, all these kind of things that you may think about. We can also help you with that, but consider that it's not, remember that it's not only scientific, there are also the, the soft skills which are important. And that you have to prove that you will also bring something to the institution you are going. So it's not you learning, but the institution where you are going 
has to take advantage of your knowledge there as well. For this, for, in order to, to learn and, and to, to take advantage of the project, you need to have a supervisor. It's important to prove that this supervisor has experience, not only in the topic that you are talking about, but also in the training of, of researchers. So when you talk about him or her, please mention how many postdocs uh, this, this supervisor has uh, supervised. If there is any of them who, who holds a, a relevant position now, then just mention it so that to prove that it's an important person or that knows how to train people, at least. And then you have to prove in the, in the fourth point that you are, regardless of your, of your level in your career, that you are a, a person that is willing to take advantage of all opportunities to grow so that you have a, a professional maturity enough that anything that you received in this project will let you develop, that you will boost, it will boost your career and let you apply for an ERC, for, to, I don't know, to start um, leading your own research group, etc. Then the second point is impact. We'll not talk about that. And finally, implementation. Here is, I think, well, with impact, where you, most of you have the, the, the biggest trouble because it's not really a, a research approach. It's a lot of blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and if it really is about how well is the project, how well organized it is, and how good is the institution where you're going. If you've gone through the template, you will see that there is a mandatory Gantt chart which should prove how good is your work plan. Um, we put this one here, it's from a, a Marie Curie that was funded last year, to show that it doesn't need to be something very sophisticated. Here there are seven lines with the work package, the liberals, you will have to submit milestones, and then the impact. So there is a, one line for the conference, one line for dissemination, meetings with other groups, and project management. So it should be something easy, simple, and that the evaluator can really see that you know what you're talking about and, and have a clear image of, of your project. Remember that evaluators may read 15, 20 projects, and if you put something really messy, um, they just um, are tired of reading projects, so make it very simple for them. And then we have these other three questions. Uh, the, the, the first one in this slide is quite important because since a lot of people ask for 24 pro uh, months project, you have to prove that your project really needs these 24 months. So plan ahead, mention uh, how long will all activities be, why would you need to be uh, paid for 24 years in such a, a good salary, maybe they consider that with 18 months it's enough for your project. Mention why would you, how would you use the funds that they will give you if you will need to, to hire someone maybe to do some parts which are, are not so relevant in scientific terms to save you time, for example. Um, how how will you, you will divide the work packages in terms of months? Why would you need four months for analytical research, maybe, etc. So make it easy for the, for the evaluator to, to see that your project is well structured and, and that it really needs all this time. And then the other two questions are more related to a, the institution where you're going. My suggestion with this is that you ask the international services there, or if you're applying to UPF, ask, ask us and how to, to, uh, to, to fill this question. And about the management structure and risk management, it is important to, to have contingency plans. Even if your project, maybe it's not, you don't see any risk, evaluators will always find some risk there, some bottleneck or some point that may risk your project. So include them and say how you will overcome them if they happen. Then about the CV, um, well, I probably you are tired of doing different kinds of CVs. Um, also, if you are going coming to UPF, we can help you with that. Finally, there is also this late table you have to, to fill in. It's also administrative issues, so don't worry much about that. We can, well, or the institution where you're going can help you with that as well. And ethical issues, this is a quite important aspect. They will not turn your project down because of the ethical project uh, aspects at first. But you should be aware of what, if any, issues you may have. Because once the project is granted, you will have a limited time to prove that, that you're aware of, of the, the specific circumstances of it and to show or to send, submit a lot of documents. 
So think ahead, plan ahead, and start if you need informed consent uh, documents, uh, if you're doing interviews, if you're doing experiments, think of what you will need and at least inform them of, okay, maybe I don't have them now, but I'm aware of what is needed, and if it is the case, I can, I can submit them in one month, for example. And just uh, a hint on evaluation. The, of the three parts we talk about, excellent is worth 50%, impact 30% and implementation 20%. So you may think, okay, excellent, this, this is where I'm good, this is the research. It's important, okay, I'll get the most points of, over there. And maybe impact and quality and, and efficiency of implementation, it's 13, 20%, maybe if I don't make such a big effort, it doesn't make a difference. You have to aim for the 100 points in all the parts. It's a very, um, it is very challenging to get these projects. You should aim at least at having 95 out of 100 points. So all parts must be perfect. So do not leave anything for the last minute, because as, as George will tell you, he's seen a lot of uh, good research proposals with bad impact maybe or bad uh, implementation aspects, which then they are turned down. And finally here, we've, as we are quite behind on time. Uh, there are some slides about general tips and evaluation, uh, like actual um, evaluation reports, some sentences that people from other areas have been kind enough to let us uh, show you, which uh, you will be able to read them when we send you the, the presentations. Here there are like, all these comments. And well, thank you. I know I've been quite quite fast. I apologize for that, but I really think that what uh, Gemma and George can offer you today is more, is more relevant and makes it, it, it what makes this session probably worthwhile. If you have any question, please do not hesitate to send us an email to, to this um, address. If you are applying to UPF, please also say which department you are applying to so that the relevant project manager can answer you and provide you a more personalized uh, service. And, well, thank you all for your attention.